The private sector makes, the public sector takes. This relationship between the two largest economic categories is incredibly imbalanced and must mean that one remains subservient to the other. With its monopoly on violence, the public sector is the obvious winner in this fight, but it's not that black and white. Often at the top of both of these institutions, the lines between the two are incredibly blurred. Those at the top of the private sector bribe those at the top of the public sector, and then the top of the public sector gives special favours to those at the top of the private sector. You still following? The powerful look after each other across the boundaries of their sectors to protect their own power and monopolies. The largest private industries get massive tax breaks which others don't, receive land taken by force with eminent domain, receive massive bailouts when their profits turn to losses, are the first recipients of fiat credit expansion, and many more. All of these privileges and special interests are granted to protect the private oligarchs from their greatest threat, competition. It is a severe mistake to believe that big businesses the likes of Amazon and the US federal government are on opposing sides. Their interactions are much more along the lines of, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. The most damaging industry for this is the pharmaceutical one. Big Pharma lobbies absurd amounts of money in order to be granted intellectual property privileges over their medicines, literally turning them into a monopoly where they otherwise wouldn't be, and once they're free from competition they can charge whatever price they like, regardless of what a free market would actually pay for it. With this in mind, it's easy to see how the rich stay rich, regardless of whether or not their poor entrepreneurship should have bankrupted them, or at least knocked them down a few pegs, but this will not always be the case. As it stands, the tech industry has its own oligarchy such as Google, Facebook and Twitter. These should not even be called tech companies. The tech that they sell is minuscule compared to their real product, your data. Facebook's server upkeep could be entirely funded by the money that they make in ad revenue, but their real bread and butter is collecting your location, browsing history and spending preferences to then sell on to other data companies who use it to monetize your internet usage. You do not see a penny of this massive industry worth billions that you actively participate in, but there is a solution. Blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer technology used by cryptocurrencies where everyone can see how much of a currency exists, how quickly it's being generated, the volumes that are being moved, etc. so that everyone can understand what is being done with their money and one organisation like a bank doesn't have a monopoly on this information. This blockchain technology could easily be used to store the data that you create by using the internet and data collection companies would have to pay you before having access to your data. So Facebook would literally pay you to use their site and still make huge profits. For all the same reasons that crypto decentralises currency, it can decentralise data. This technological decentralization is what will make government obsolete. If there was full transparency like this and everybody could always see what the government is doing, they would not be able to get away with half of the things that they do currently. The transparency starts with money. Cryptocurrency is truly revolutionary and will make government money obsolete. There is no doubt in my mind at all. When governments control money, they can control every single thing you do with it without you even knowing. Aside from that, they can confiscate it from you at will, they can inflate it at will, which devalues your money, they can print as much as they like to feed their special interest oligarchs, and then they force you to use their inferior money and pay taxes in it. Well, now they can't. The only thing you will ever need now to own money that can't be rotted away by inflation, confiscated and prescribed are two things, a digital wallet and a VPN. When you have these two things, you can take your money anywhere in the world on a USB stick, you can buy goods from around the world with minimal fees and bureaucracy, that money that you turn into crypto is forever free providing you don't lose it. The other possibilities of blockchain are endless. Without a monopoly over money, the public oligarchs are severely limited in their ability to prop up the private oligarchs and vice versa. The key to freedom is decentralization of everything. When you start decentralizing money, you open up avenues for so much more decentralization of power to take place. 
After that, localities like states and counties aren't tethered to a giant welfare warfare state and can become self-determining and self-governing. Communities can become self-sufficient and provide for themselves, and this keeps happening until you reach the smallest facet of power, the individual. When the individual cannot be forced into subservience by the oligarchs, they are free. Freeing the information will free the people. When governments and data barons cannot continue with their lack of transparency, they will finally be checked and forced to behave responsibly, and the more responsible a government becomes, the smaller it becomes, and that is the meaning of decentralising power. When power and information are held by self-serving monopolies, there is tyranny. When power is held by private individuals, there is liberty. And this diffusion of power is already underway, and this liberty is inevitable. Even now, physical means of production are becoming greatly decentralised, and no technology typifies this more than the rise of commercially affordable 3D printers. Now with a $200 printer, $30 of filament and some patience, you can make a firearm in your own home. With this, the government's monopoly on violence quickly becomes obsolete. When the government doesn't have a monopoly on violence and money, their coercive power disintegrates at rapid speed, which is their power to suppress free market competition for their special interests. Technological progress by its own nature will reach a velocity faster than government regulation can keep up with it. After enough time, this can make the entire system of coercive governance obsolete, and eventually cease to exist. Anarchists normally have two ideas of how anarchism will be achieved. Either the system will become so big that it collapses, or that it must be overthrown in a violent revolution. The truth is that both of these options involve disaster, bloodshed, and no reason to believe that a tyrannical government will not immediately re-emerge. However, this peaceful and wonderful technological revolution is inevitable. It will happen, and there's nothing the government can do to stop it. And it might even be too late for them to try and slow it down with red tape now. You can already own independent currency, you can already subvert gun control. I'm reminded of the Ayn Rand quote, the question isn't who is going to let me, it's who is going to stop me. Now, nobody can stop you, because nobody can stop the signal. The foundation for this revolutionary epoch already lies in the public domain, and it cannot be stopped. So, here are the keys to freedom that you can get right now. Bitcoin, a 3D printer, and a self-sustaining household to provide yourself with energy, food and water. If you have these few simple things, you are as decentralised as an individual can possibly be at the moment, and therefore as free as you can possibly be. You will make yourself well ahead of this coming curve, and this will eventually become the standard way of living. Rural and urban areas will be liberated by technology, they will govern themselves, and then ultimately, the individual will govern themselves, completely free of compulsory coercion. Karl Marx and Hegel were right in one thing. Humanity is progressing to an inevitable point. Marx wrongly saw this point as being communism, but with our modern grasp of technological development, we can see that this point is in fact individualism. This individualism will not come out of the bad elements of society expanding and then collapsing, it will come as these detrimental institutions wither away as they're overtaken by productive ones. Remember what I said at the beginning, the private sector makes and the public sector takes. The maker sector will become so advanced that it can't be forcibly taken from, and the taker sector will be starved out of existence. This whole exposition I've just done is my vision for how counter-economics will occur, not by individuals willingly breaking away from the government system to destroy it, but the individuals within it naturally progressing to the point where the government system is both completely unnecessary and unenforceable. This process cannot be rushed by violence. Technological progress grows quickest in peaceful competition. It is in our own interest to maintain peace and prevent a catastrophic collapse of the system, which will only halt the technological progress and will massively delay or even backpedal on this process which will inevitably make us free. This is a merger between agorist counter-economics and what is described as crypto-anarchy, 
is how I see anarchy and freedom actually occurring. It will not and should not occur through violent means which will allow a vacuum of power to exist and then just be refilled by another violent state. The state must be withered away, not torn down, or else it will just rise again from the ashes. And this is why I have advocated voting for Joe Jorgensen in America. We must be as free as we possibly can be within the system instead of trying to just separate ourselves from it. The reason being is this quote from Pericles, an ancient Athenian statesman. Just because you do not take an interest in politics doesn't mean politics won't take an interest in you. No matter how much we hate the state, the state is here, it's not going anywhere anytime soon, we must use the methods available to be as free as we possibly can for the time being. True freedom will come eventually, but it cannot be rushed or else it will fall apart. It could be years, it could be decades, even centuries, but it is inevitable. It needs to happen, and it will happen. Even if we don't live to see the zenith of this epoch, those who we leave behind will be able to enjoy it, and they will sooner if we allow the process to unravel itself unobstructed. All we can do now is try to be as free and peaceful as we can and enjoy it to its fullest extent. So don't get your hopes wrapped up in a boogaloo or accelerating a societal collapse. Place your energy into optimism for the inevitably liberated future and into making yourself as free as you can possibly be for now. Take it easy.